Season 6 is now well underway, and as usual, when it comes to Fortnite seasons, Epic Games have put a whole bunch of changes into the game. From spooky castles up in the hills, to a floating island being held hostage by a cube named Kevin, there are some pretty obvious changes that have been placed into the map. But there are some smaller changes out there too. And in this video, we're going to be covering the changes that you might have missed. If you enjoyed today's video, then don't forget to give it a like and to subscribe for even more awesome gaming content. Number 5. Embarrassing Breast Physics Fortnite has become known across the world as the kid-friendly battle royale. There's no blood or gore, their art style is nice and cartoony, and if you go into a school there's a 99% chance at least one kid will be doing a dance from the game. But when Fortnite updated to Season 6, there was one change that was added to the game which definitely goes against Epic's kid-friendly message. The Battle Pass Tier 1 skin Calamity was the subject of a very strange glitch that, for some reason, made her breast jiggle when you did the Jubilation emote. Epic Games quickly released a statement saying that the bouncing breasts were completely unintended, embarrassing and that it was careless for them to let the updates ship that way. Although it's pretty confusing to think about how a glitch would have such a specific result. The glitch was quickly patched out of the game, but not before a whole bunch of people were able to record and upload footage of it happening. Unfortunately for Epic Games, there would be no getting away from the time Calamity's breasts bounced. Number 4. Easter Island Head Statues Are Gone At the beginning of Season 5, there were a lot of crazy new locations and mechanics to explore. The Moistemeyer biome had been replaced entirely by an expansive desert, and there were a bunch of rifts that had been added to the game that we could use to hurdle ourselves up into the air. But alongside those two massive changes were the giant Easter Island stone heads. Six of them had been placed around the Fortnite Island, presumably by the giant crack in the sky. They didn't do anything in Season 5 to further the story of the game, but they were added in a couple of Battle Pass challenges. Strangely, however, the Easter Island heads of the map have all been removed. Other than the Loot Lake Island being abducted by Kevin the Cube at the beginning of the season, and the strange new labs being added underneath Wailing Woods, and the giant castle being added at Haunted Hills, it's not like anything has really changed about the map. There hasn't been any more rift activity, and all the other items that were transported by the rift in the sky are still around. So it does kind of beg the question, where did the heads go? And why did they disappear so suddenly? Number 3. Time to Harvest Season 6 didn't have any major map reworks like Season 5's brand new desert biome, but it did bring a whole bunch of smaller changes. There were new locations added like the Corrupted Zones and the Giant Medieval Castle, Kevin the Cube has abducted the house from Loot Lake, and the crops over at Fatal Fields are finally ready to be harvested. That seems like a pretty meaningless change as far as gameplay is concerned, right? Well, you would be wrong. In Season 6, it seems that Epic is putting a fairly big emphasis on stealthier gameplay. There are the strange shadowy cubes that you can activate to turn basically invisible and speed around the map. And then there's the lesser known stealth mechanic at Fatal Fields. Not only is it Season 6 in Fortnite, but it is also harvest season. And because of that, the crops in the Fatal Fields farm have grown up to pretty crazy heights and are ready to be cut down. Or if you don't want to cut them down, you can dive straight into them and become completely invisible to the people around you. But be warned, it's only a bunch of plants and bullets can still hurt you. But it is a lot harder to hit what you can't see. People don't really seem to be using these locations to their full potential yet, but they can end up being pretty powerful in the end zones if you use them correctly. Number 2. The OG Underground Bunker The Wailing Woods Bunker has been around for quite a while. I don't mean the new bunkers that you can get to from the middle of the hedge maze, or even the smaller bunkers that are found underneath the newly built houses in Wailing Woods. I mean the original bunker that showed up during Season 4. It had some strange scribbles on the back, you couldn't break the walls or the surface of the hatch itself, and we had no idea where it led to. Well, we had no idea where it led to until someone managed to figure out a way in. There was absolutely nothing in the OG underground bunker. It was just some square room. Now that the underground bunkers have been added to Wailing Woods, you might expect the area that started off the underground bunker hype to finally be accessible, but it isn't. You can slam away at that bunker for as long as you like and you won't be able to get in. They even got rid of the glitch that let you break through the walls to go inside. What was changed though, is the interior. While you might not be able to actually go inside the bunker properly, you can peek through the gaps and you can see that the earth within the bunker has risen up somewhat. 
That's a change that Epic had to have made deliberately. And as of yet, it isn't one that many people have caught on to. Why did they change the inside of the original Wailing Woods bunker? Who knows? But we might finally find out by the end of the season. Honorable mention! Thunder Crash glows with kills! Before Season 6 began, we got a teaser that showed the bright bomber skin looking into the weird corrupted purple cube. Inside the cube, there was an evil version of herself looking back out at her. A lot of people probably expected this evil version of the bright bomber to be included in the Season 6 Battle Pass. But it turns out that Epic Games were planning on adding her to the store instead. Of course, the evil dark bomber didn't come alone. You could also buy corrupted versions of the Rainbow Smash Pickaxe and the Rainbow Rider Glider. Now that the Dark Bomber skin set has been added to the item shop, we can finally see that the Thunder Crash has some pretty similar hidden mechanics to its Rainbow counterpart. When you kill enemies with the pickaxe equipped, it will slowly change, almost as if it's devouring the souls of your enemies. With each kill, the three horns on its head will slowly grow larger and larger and glow a little bit more violently than before. The effect reaches its maximum at 6 kills total, and when you compare the original pickaxe to the pickaxe after 6 kills, you can see it's a pretty impressive change. By the time you reach 6 kills, the three horns seem to be almost 3 times their original size and glow a bright red at the tips of the horns and a much darker red down near the base of the horns, and the whole thing sort of flickers as well. The entire head of the axe also sparkles as you hold it, which looks pretty cool. The whole point of this skin is to be the evil version of the Rainbow Smash, so for it to have the whole glowing and growing effect just like the skin has is pretty cool and fits in with the whole thematics of the skin really well. Not only that, when the three horns are fully grown, the pig looks way cooler than the Rainbow Smash. Sure, the Rainbow Smash might have a rainbow colored horn when it's fully charged up, but I have to say, three giant glowing horns is way better than one. Number 1. Input-Based Matchmaking One of the biggest things that have probably made Fortnite one of the most successful games on the planet is the ability to play with your friends no matter what console they happen to be on. For the first time ever, an Xbox player can play in the same game as a PlayStation player, which is a pretty big deal when it comes to the larger gaming industry. When two players from different systems play with each other, they are put into a lobby of mixed players. They'll get to play against both PlayStation and PC players if those are the types of people in their lobby. But if you are only playing alone, then you won't get put into lobbies with other people. I mean, could you imagine a mobile player fighting with a PC player all the time? It wouldn't be fair. What the developers of Fortnite might not have expected happening was for companies to bring out keyboard and mouse peripherals for both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. This basically ruined the whole idea of keeping keyboard and mouse PC players separated from the players on console. Obviously, the people on a console are going to find it harder to aim and harder to build because of the controllers when compared to keyboard and mouse. Even if you have the stuff like Pro Builder turned on, you're going to have a hard time against someone using a keyboard and a mouse. Luckily, Epic Games have figured out a way to put a stop to that and have now implemented an input-based matchmaking system. This means that anyone using a keyboard and a mouse on a console will be matched up with other players that use the same control system on a console. It splits up the player base, sure, but when your player base is as big as Fortnite's, I guess that's an okay sacrifice to make for a more balanced game overall. That was our list on the top 5 changes you might have missed in Fortnite Season 6. Did you know about any of these changes before watching this video, or were they all totally new to you? Leave a comment down below to let us know. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Arcade Cloud for even more awesome gaming content. Awesome.